In this video, we're going to look at how the let function can help us simplify Excel formulas that are complex or inefficient. I'm going to share the introductory lesson on let from our Modern Formulas course. So let's jump right in. Here's lesson number one on let from the course. Oh, and we're running a special deal on the course right now. I'll put a link in the description below where you can learn more and join us. In this section, we're going to talk about the let function. Let is a popular function. There was definitely a lot of hype around it when it came out, and it can be very useful in Excel. So essentially, let allows us to add variables to our formulas. And you might be asking, well, why would I want to do that? And there's really two main reasons. One is it can help us simplify our formulas to make them easier to read and understand. And two is it can help improve performance. So let's take a look at an example. On this all orders sheet here, I have a list of orders that we're going to send over to our logistics department. And they need to know the weight of each of these products so they can ship them. On this product list sheet, I have a list of products or items and their weight. So we need to do a lookup here, but there is one stipulation. If the weight is over 40 pounds, then we're just going to list bulk here so the shipping department knows that they don't need to prepare the shipment. They're going to send that to someone else to do the bulk freight. So in this column, we're going to write the formula. And I'm first going to write it without let, and then we'll write it with let to see how we can simplify it. So we'll start typing equals, we'll say if, because we have a logical test here. So we'll tab into that. And the logical test is if the weight is less than 40. So we first need to look up the weight. And we're going to do that with an X lookup. So we'll uh, type X lookup, tab into that. The lookup value is going to be the product ID, type a comma. The uh, lookup array will be the item list here, this column of items, type a comma. And then the return array, the uh, values we want to return, are in the weight column. So we'll type that there. We'll close parentheses on that. And we can edit our formula up here. So we're going to say if that, if the weight that we're returning is less than 40, then we want to return the weight. The value of true is the weight. Now, we don't have the weight anywhere. So we need to do the lookup again, the X lookup again, to return that value. So I'm just going to copy the formula text here and then paste it right here. I'm also going to expand the formula bar. Just click that small arrow. Uh, if you still don't see it, you can drag the formula bar up and down like that. So the uh, if the, the value of true is the weight, type a comma, value if false, here I'm just going to put the word bulk. And I'm going to put it in all caps and uh, just like that, wrapped in quotes. So we'll close the parentheses on that, hit enter. That'll jump us back over to all orders. And we now have this new column here that either has the weight or if the weight is uh, over 40 pounds, uh, greater than or equal to 40 pounds, then it's going to return the word bulk. And we might want to quickly just rename this. We'll call this uh, ship weight. And uh, so that would be our formula. Now, the problem with this formula is it's not very efficient. And what I mean by that is if we look at the formula here, as you can see, we have the X lookup formula in it twice. It's the exact same formula, and we have it twice. So what this means is that Excel will have to calculate this formula two times, at least for every time that we have a ship weight under 40. So anytime this is this first logical statement within our if function is true, then X lookup, or if, if this is true, then X lookup is going to calculate again here for the exact same formula. So this could, in this case, calculate thousands of times or could be tens of thousands of times where Excel has to do this calculation twice. And of course, that's not very efficient. So let's take a look at how we can use let to clean this up. And I'm first just going to add a new column where we'll write our let formula. Of course, you can modify existing ones and I'll show how to do that as well. But here we're going to start with equals let. We'll tab into that. And the first argument in let is the name. So this is a variable name where we can store a value. And I'm going to name this weight. You can basically name this whatever you want. So we're going to type weight there. And then we need the uh, name value. And this is going to be the result of our X lookup. Now, I already have the X lookup uh, copied to the clipboard, so I can just paste it in here. I don't have to rewrite it. But of course, you could rewrite the formula here. And so what this is going to do when let runs, it's going to run this formula, or when let calculates, I should say. It's going to calculate the X lookup and then store that value, the result of that, in this variable called weight. And next, we can do a calculation. We can either here have more names, more variables, or we can do the final calculation. In this case, we're going to do the final calculation. So I'm going to type a comma here. 
And often what I also like to do right here is hit Alt Enter and that's just gonna add a new line and this line will be our calculation. So this again, just gonna make it a little easier to read. You don't have to do this step, but Alt Enter will do that, new line. So here we're going to write our if formula. Now our logical test now, instead of having the X look up here, we're just gonna have our variable called weight. And as you can see, as I start typing here, I have weight in my list here where I can autocomplete. So I can just down arrow there, tab into weight. And we're gonna say, if the weight is less than 40, then we wanna return the weight. And we'll just tab into that. If not, we're gonna return bulk. And so now our formula becomes much more simplified. This is actually the formula here we can reuse our weight variable two times or as many times as we'd like in this formula, in the calculation. So we'll close parentheses on the if. We also need to close parentheses on let, and we'll go ahead and hit enter, and you can see we get the exact same result. And so again, if we go back to why use let, this formula covers both of these reasons. It simplifies the formula and improves performance. Of course, we are only calculating XLOOKUP one time, so that's gonna improve performance. And this example contains 1,000 formulas, and 710 of those would use XLOOKUP twice, so we've improved performance by 42%. I have a separate video that explains this percentage change formula, and I'll link that up below this video. And if we look at this compared to the other formula, as you can see here, it's just simplified, it's a bit easier to read. Of course, you'll need to know what the let function does, and your users of your file will also need to know how let works in order for this to really be simplified. But once you do know that, then you can simplify these formulas and make them easier to read. So that's the basics of the let function. In the next video, we're gonna compare this to helper columns. So that was lesson number one from our section on let within the Modern Formulas course. This course contains training on all the new functionality with Excel formulas. So if you're feeling a bit behind with features like dynamic arrays, spill ranges, let, and lambda, then this course is for you. You'll also learn how to create interactive Excel reports that are easy for your boss and coworkers to use. And again, right now we're running a special offer on the course for our YouTube subscribers. So I'll put a link in the description where you can learn more and grab the deal. And if you wanna learn other ways to make Excel more efficient, then check out this video next. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.